President Yoram Seveni appear to have saved the Trade Ministry Permanent Secretary Geraldine Sali through a directive for her immediate reinstatement. Parliament Secretary Committee on Tourism, Trade and Industry had recommended her stepping aside to allow for an investigation. Parliament had found Sali culpable of causing the government financial loss when an initial 4.6 billion shillings diverted for innovation of the farmer's house without just fibre accountability shot up to 6 billion shillings. The PS Geraldine Sali be investigated in the view of prosecution by the DPP for, for offences committed under Section 79 of the PFMA 2015. It turns out that she is not off the hook completely with another parliamentary report of an inquiry into the compensation of war loss claims directing that she is interdicted and investigated by both the Directorate of Public Prosecutions and Inspectorate of Government. Debate by MPs on the report which stemmed from the need to understand governance and value for money on the budgetary appropriation for cooperatives was not allowed by the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Among. The findings of the report border to criminality and I find it hard as a House for us to be the ones to debate that report. We are not competent enough to take actions. On those reports. Among instead instructed that the Director of Public Prosecutions, Inspector General of Government, and the Directorate of Criminal Intelligence and Investigations undertakes the investigations in line with the findings. DPP to give us actions taken within three months from the day of submission of the report. In the report, Sally is found culpable of creating without authority a parallel verification committee to the interministerial committee named by cabinet. The strongly worded report indicates that Sally overstepped her mandate to undertake a duplicated, suspicious, illegitimate and illegal decision to name the second committee which has caused the government financial loss. Firstly, the committee states that the second committee was composed of only staff of the trade ministry which presented conflict of interest beside the lack of competence to conduct verification. The created committee lacked clearly laid down criteria for verification of all those claims. The report highlights this for being the cause of the failure to conclude verification for a process of compensation which started way back in 1986. Multiple compensation to the same cooperatives like Teso, Lango and Masaba cooperative unions which received double ahead of those which were earlier verified. There are instances of excess payment like to Masaka cooperative union which received 7 billion shillings in excess of the verified amounts. Underpayment to some of the cooperative unions like Wavum Pologoma, which submitted a claim of 100 billion shillings, but instead received 2.7 billion. The report recommends dissolution of the second committee and reinstatement of the interministerial committee instituted by the cabinet, but had been rendered redundant. That the entire verification is completed and then compensation follows. It is indicated that out of the verified amount worth 232 billion shillings, the Treasury had released 119 billion. However, ministries of trade and justice and constitutional affairs have paid out 147 billion shillings, which raises concerns that the budgets for other purposes were diverted towards the payment, impacting service delivery. It is indicated in the report that some of the dished out money purportedly to the cooperatives would end back into the pockets of the officials at the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives. Jackson Onyango, NTV at Parliament.